What if I told you that you're the reason the credit bureaus are not responding back to your letters? Would you believe me? Of course not. That's why I'm going to take it upon myself to show you the law that you are breaking every time you send in the dispute letters. Hey, what's going on, y'all? My name is Michael, and I'm the co-founder of the credit team. And after helping hundreds of thousands of people get deletions from their credit reports and increasing their credit scores, we noticed a couple things happen. One of three things normally happen. Number one, the items come back verified. Number two, the credit bureaus just don't respond. Or number three, they'll send you what we call a stall letter. Well, I'm gonna show you a quick video and then I'm gonna show you a tactic you can use to get the credit bureaus to respond to you and violate you. And I'm gonna show you this video where these lawyers got together and they told you point blank how the credit bureaus violated your rights. So all these people who take the time to meticulously document a case that the bill isn't theirs or the bill has been paid. That is never seen by anybody? It's not seen by anyone who considers it in determining whether or not information will be uh, removed from a credit report. It's not forwarded on to the person who has the complaint with you? No, it is never forwarded on. Never forwarded on to the credit. Over 40 million people have errors on their credit reports. So they say that's about one in five. Well, well, we really don't care if you have an error on your credit report because you're gonna get violated either way. Well, what if I told you having the error on your credit report is only part of the process of getting items removed. The other part is actually crafting the right letter. So I'm gonna show you how to craft the right letter. I'm gonna show you how to send it. And I'm gonna show you how to set them up and get your desired results, which is that deletion. All right, all right guys, so as promised, I'm gonna show you why your dispute letters are not getting a response back from the credit bureaus um as you saw in the video on um, the credit bureaus man they be on some some nasty games and you know um part of the system is just to violate you and hope you never do anything about it so what i want to tell you guys is um i'm gonna show you the law that you guys keep violating um because simply uh we didn't know this information so having the credit repair company for five years i would start learning the laws and when i send letters off letters would come back some be verified some don't come back at all and then you know some clients pay pay for services where we um help facilitate other disputes but uh, what i want to tell you is um you know sometimes you have clients you have to tell them hey i cannot do this service because it will hurt you more than it will help you and what i'm noticing is a lot of you guys are looking for information and you're learning information from different people. I have uh, messages in my inbox about different laws that I never talked about and other people want to use the CFPB or the Attorney General or the BBB to facilitate some type of dispute. And I asked the simple question is, where did you hear this information? And the reason I ask this is because um, a lot of people are just saying stuff and they never had a credit repair company. They never actually did any disputes. They just regurgitate something they read or something they saw. Um, and But the information is here for you guys. Um, a lot of these people are quote unquote studying, but they ain't the type of people that even know how to study. I wasn't the type of person who know how to study. So I had to hire a mentor to teach me how to study. So I'm just bringing back the information to you guys from um, someone who ran a successful credit repair company for years and years. Okay, so let's get in, let's get into it, okay? Before we craft our letter, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys where you went wrong, where you guys made the mistakes, okay? So number one, 15 USC 1681I, right? We always go to 1681I because it's the procedure in case of disputed accuracy. We're gonna dispute the accuracy of the accounts but there's a specific procedure that the credit bureaus have to follow. All right, so when you guys are sending in your disputes, first off, you wanna ask for an investigation. All right, so uh, reinvestigation is here. All right, so I'm just gonna highlight a couple of things. They have to give you a response before the end of a 30 day period, beginning on a date which the agency received the notice of dispute from the consumer or reseller. So um, let me break that down real quick. So when the, when the letter gets to the credit bureaus, Equifax, TransUnion, Experian, the, the uh, consumer reporting agencies, when it gets there, they have 30 days from the time it got there to actually do their job. Now, what's been happening is a lot of you guys have been sending in multiple, multiple, um, letters violations or adding extra stuff right so all right so you can go to cfpb to submit a complaint and what that'll do is all right so 
<laughs> what that'll do is it'll give an extension period to the reinvestigation. Now, normally when I talk to people, they'll send their first letter and then they'll say, well, the credit bureaus didn't respond back to me. I'm about to file a CLPB complaint. What that does is it added an additional 15 days to the investigation process. So it may seem like you're not getting any results, but what you keep doing is you keep pushing the timeline back over and over and over again. So hypothetically, let's say you sent a letter in, you waited 20 days, you didn't hear anything. Now you want to do a CFPB complaint because you didn't hear anything, or you do a BBB complaint, or you do an attorney general complaint, and you're keep, and you keep complaining about the same thing. So what happens is the credit bureaus are well within their rights to investigate further. They don't care to investigate further. They just gonna sit on it and gonna wait. They're gonna say, okay, well, you got a charge off account and you sent the letter in 20 days ago, 29 days ago, but now you submit another complaint. Okay, cool. Let us get an additional 15 days and we're not gonna do anything. And at that point, most people either one or two things, give up or go try harder. And you start sending multiple letters. Hey, you didn't validate, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. And then that's when you get into the a rhythm of, uh, they just keep pushing it back. They're like, well, you know, you didn't give us the allotted time. So, so except as provided in paragraph C, paragraph C, it gives you the limitations on the reinvestigations, right? So uh, the 30 day period described in paragraph A, which is up here, may be extended for not more than 15 additional days if the consumer reporting agency receives information from consumer, you, during that 30 day period that is relevant to the investigation. So if you say, hey, um, my day last activity is wrong. Okay, cool, let's, let's investigate that. Oh, oh, also my payment ain't supposed to be zero. It's supposed to be 15 or like, okay, cool. Give us 15 more days. We're going to investigate. And then you keep going and keep going. Well, you got to validate or if you send it straight to the collection agency, hey, validate this. And the, the uh, collection agency send it over to the credit bureaus. Now the credit bureaus got another 15 days to do their job too, because now you're disputing with two different entities. And then I think you know, people get stuck with that. So what I'm going to do is later on in this video, I'm going to write a letter to, to show you how to send it. And uh, I'm going to show you how to send certified. Um, I think everybody should send their stuff certified. Um, I'm going to show you a certified tracking receipt, one that I have. I'm going to try to black some of it out or yeah, I'm going to redact some of it so you can see what it looks like the delivery process. Um, before something gets either to the credit bureaus or a debt collector or anybody. And then, you know, if you got a certified green receipt, you'll have the actual green piece of paper where it says, hey, this item got signed for by this person and it got here on this day. All right. Woo, that was a lot. All right. So what I'm going to do is we're going to write up a dispute letter. Um, what I would use and wouldn't use in the dispute uh, in a situation where I dispute. Now, I do have one caveat though. Um, when you're sending in your initial dispute, do not use CFPB, do not use BBB, do not use your attorney general. Once your information either doesn't come back, comes back verified, or a stall letter, that's when I would suggest that you use these other avenues. I wouldn't just use it off the bat. All right, so we're gonna come back. I'm gonna show you how to write up your very own dispute letter. And this is beginner friendly, so don't worry. Just stay tuned to the end and uh, you can just grab this letter from me. I'm um, just make it. And then um, if you're one of the first people here, right, first, second, third, if you're watching this live, uh, drop, hit the like button and stuff, all that subscribe is stuff. Yeah. All right, what's going on, guys? So what I did was I went ahead and wrote something real quick. Um, I was going to write it, but I didn't. I mean, I wanted to keep it simple. You know what I'm saying? So um, what I want you to do is I want you to copy this format. Don't copy this exact letter. Matter of fact, you probably can. Um, so when you write your letter to the credit bureaus of the big three, um, you want to kind of have it like this. My bad. Let me uh, move this down with the address there. So you want to put your first name, last name, middle initial, your street, your street, and then your city address. And then you want to write to whatever credit bureau, uh, Equifax, TransUnion, or Experian goes here. 
Um, let me see, can I highlight these? I'm not gonna highlight it. Actually, I will. So your information will go here. So I'm gonna highlight this and we'll just highlight that in blue. Nope, that looks trash. We want to highlight this one in, let's do a yellow. All right, so your first name, last name, middle initial, if you got one, um, goes here, uh, street address, whatever. And then you want to uh, call out the credit bureau. So once you're making this letter, you can make this letter once and then just change this to uh, reflect Equifax TransUnion Experian. Let's do another yellow. And then you want to put their address of the credit bureaus and you can put the date. The date's optional. Because, I mean, it, it really won't make no difference once we send it. But what I want you guys to do is I want you to send it certified green receipt, okay? All right, so this is what, we call, what we're going to call an uh, investigation letter request. All right, so investigation letter request, right? Um, Don't put this, my bad. Do not put this. This is just the name of the letter, the type of letter it is. Um, put your date of birth um, so they can verify your identity. Just use the last four of your social um yeah use the last four of your social because what you don't want to do is you won't, don't want to give them too much information because some of these some of these people who buy the bad debt junk debt get information from the credit bureaus on you all right so it says to whom it may concern okay i received a copy of my credit report with the intention of trying to improve my credit and take care of my responsibilities and notice a few accounts that I wanted a little more explanation on. All right, so basically what you're doing is you're setting the stage. Hey, I want information on these accounts that I'm seeing on my credit report. All right, so I'm not saying that they're reporting right or wrong. I'm saying that I'm not 100% sure if they are. I also read something called the Fair Credit Reporting Act where it said by law, I had the right to challenge anything I'm not sure is accurate. Some some of the people reporting things on me, I have never heard of, which made me write to you all. All right. Just simple. Like we're not really saying too much. All right. So are you familiar with something called 15 USC section 1681 IA? Question mark. It says if you can't provide proof, then these accounts must be deleted. All right. Well, I want these accounts deleted if they're not 100 percent right and correct. All right, so could you please check on these and get right back with me? It also says that you have 30 days to complete this investigation. Please investigate the following accounts and remove them if anything is missing or not correct on them. Now, this is pretty much what you're saying. Like, hey, I want you to know 15 USC 1681 IA says this. And if you don't have, if they're not 100% correct or 100% accurate or if anything's missing, remove it um they have the option to update or modify also but we don't want that so we're not going to say that all right so now you want to come down here you want to list your accounts all your negative accounts so you want to say your your collection account name um let's say middling management or something like that you'll put that there you'll put the account number here and you'll say something like please investigate every piece of information you'll say something like Please investigate if every piece of information is correct. If not, please remove it from my credit report. Now, uh, if you heard the video before, you'll realize like sometimes, well, the credit bureaus, they're sloppy on their investigation procedures. So we really don't want, or we really don't too much care about first round deletions. We just want to set the credit bureaus up because once they get the letters from us, they have to do a proper investigation. In the video that you heard before, um, more into the video, they were saying something like the credit bureaus never do a proper investigation. They even interviewed three employees from one of the big three um, credit reporting agencies. And they were like, well, we didn't never do an investigation. So once you send this letter off, then you're pretty much setting everything up for the reinvestigation. Um, some CRAs, they'll just delete the information and some will just give you the run around. But the most important fact to take, the most important point to take away from what I'm saying is that um, you're going to have to send this letter in and then wait. All right. Some of you guys are sending in multiple letters. You're doing different things. You're you're doing CFPB, you're doing BBB, you're doing attorney general. And all you're doing is you're giving them more time, giving them more time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do a certified. All right. So, um, oh, my bad. This last part. 
Enclose a copy of your driver's license, social security card, and proof of residence, such as utility bill, along with your credit report so they can see, all right? All right, y'all, so what I did was I went to the USPS website and I went to certified mail so you guys can see it. I'm highlighting right here. Um, let me zoom in real quick. So certified mail, why you want to use certified mail? Because you need to do what? Prove you sent it, all right? You can um see when it was delivered or that the delivery attempt was made and get the signature of the person who accepts the mailing when combined with return receipt. And it's saying um, if you combine it with the return receipt, you can get the person's signature. Uh, and I think the cost, well, this is the cost. I don't know if it's, that's for every every place, but I'm gonna show you what a certified green receipt look at looks like. Give me one second. So certified mail, certified mail receipt will look something like this. And what's gonna happen is these four, these are uh, 16 digits on the side, 16, 20 digits on the side. Um, you can put it in the website of USPS and then you can track and see when your mail actually got there. Now, this is the most important part. When your mail got there, give it five days. Give it five days and then start your 30 days because you want to give them time, man, for real. Because the, the, the worst thing you can do is send in a good dispute letter or something like that.